this is a fun problem, and I'm going to look at it with two different strategies. So this expression is very familiar to me, and my first strategy is going to involve just sort of remembering what this is close to and then finding a way to do a comparison. So I'll call it strategy one. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is find the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing. And I remember that the definition of E looks very much like this. And it was like a limit as n goes to infinity 1 plus 1 over n to the n. So we're almost there. Again, that's the definition of E. So to figure this out, I'm going to make a substitution because I want to have a 1 over something here instead of a 2 over something. So my substitution will be let m equal n over 2. Um, and that means n, I'm going to have to sub this in this exponent, n is 2m. And as n goes to infinity, so does m. So I've transformed this thing. So the limit as m goes to infinity. 1 plus 2 over n, well, that's just 1 over m. That was the point of my substitution. I'm trying to fit this form that gives me the number e. And then the exponent n is now 2m. And so I can use the properties of limits and say that this is equal to the limit as m goes to infinity. 1 plus 1 over m to the m. all squared. So in other words, the limit of the square of a thing is the square of a limit of the thing. And now what I have in these parentheses is just the number e, so I end up with e squared and I'm done. This sequence converges to e squared. Let's look at a little different strategy. And this would be if, if you didn't recognize that limit that gives you the number e. Um, what I can do is compare to a function of, of real numbers here and say, really, what I'm trying to do is compute the limit of 1 plus 2 over x to the x as x goes to infinity. And again, the advantage of this is that it allows you to use all the tools of calculus once you know you're talking about a function on the real numbers. And if the limit of this thing exists, then it's going to be equal to the limit of the sequence, which is evaluated only on the integers. Um, so how do we handle a limit like this? We have a problematic exponent, and using a natural log can get us around that. So what we do is give this a name. I'm going to call it y. Then I take the natural log of both sides. And as long as we're dealing with continuous functions, they're free to move in and, in and out of limits. And the natural log is a nice continuous function as long as x is positive. OK, and the properties of natural logs are very good at helping you deal with exponents. So I have limit as x goes to infinity. I can bring down this exponent out in front. So I have x natural log. 1 plus 2 over x. This expression inside the limit is indeterminate because this is an infinity, that x term. And then the natural log of 1 plus 2 over x, well, that's getting close to the natural log of 1 when x becomes large. So that's a 0. And infinity times 0 is indeterminate. So we've got to rearrange this in a form that allows us to take advantage of L'Hopital's rule. So next line, natural log of y is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity. And I'm going to try to build a fraction that gives me an indeterminate form, and then I'm allowed to use L'Hopital. So I'm going to say, instead of putting an x here, I'm going to put a 1 over x in the denominator. All right, and as x becomes large, again, natural log 1 plus 2 over x is getting close to natural log 1, which is a 0. And then the denominator, 1 over x, that's getting close to 0. So now I can use L'Hopital. So I'm allowed to differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator separately. So that numerator is going to give me a 1 over 1 plus 2 over x multiplied by the derivative of 1 plus 2 over x. That's the chain rule. And 2 over x is like a 2 times x to the negative 1. So I'm going to get negative 2 times x to the negative 2. In other words, negative 2 over x squared. And then in the denominator, I have an x to the negative 1. When I differentiate it, I get negative x to the negative 2. OK, the minus signs cancel. Multiply the top and bottom by x squared, and those cancel. And I end up with natural log y is the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over 1 
plus 2 over x. And now this limit is unambiguous. The 2 over x, that approaches 0 as x becomes large, and I'm left with just this constant of 2 divided by 1. So natural log of y is equal to 2. I can then invert this expression and solve for y. Remember, y was the name for the original thing we wanted. So I'm going to take that e in the base for the logarithm and move it to the other side, and I get y equals e squared. Same answer we got before.